I'll be the first one to admit that originally I bought my 3D printer mostly as a toy, but it's seriously become one of my favorite tools that I wouldn't want to live without. I've printed a lot of practical stuff, fixed things that I couldn't find the parts for, but also, of course, made a bunch of fun and weird things. So stick around and I'll show you why a 3D printer should definitely be on your shopping list for this year. 3D printing has fascinated me for a long time. It's kind of like creating something from nothing. It feels like having a Star Trek replicator. Downloading a design from the internet and then just holding it in your hands a couple hours later is just magical. But I hesitated for a long time getting a 3D printer, mainly for two reasons. Firstly, it isn't cheap. I'd say for a decent printer, you're spending anywhere between 300 and 800 bucks, and that's a lot. And secondly, I thought, is this really something I need? Is it something I'll use a lot, or is it just something that'll gather dust in my closet? So it took a while before I finally took the plunge. So I started out with an AnchorMake M5, and since then I've added the Creality K1C, the Ender 3v3 KE, and just recently I got the Bamboo Lab A1. All in all, a 3D printer turned out not just to be a toy, but a tool. And that's exactly why I'm gonna tell you my top three reasons why you should get a 3D printer. If you're already intrigued by this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you're not missing any cool videos from me. But now let's get back to the video. For me, the most important thing is being able to print little gadgets. You can either download them directly from the internet or just create your own. Both obviously have their pros and cons. The easiest thing, especially if you're a beginner, is downloading stuff from the internet. It saves a lot of time and you're just ready to go. So in general, I'd say it's the quick and easy route. There are tons of websites where you can download 3D print files. Most of the stuff is free, but for some you have to pay. There are already so many models out there, so you can just search with a specific problem in mind, for example, a cable organizer, or you can just browse through the top models and get inspired for cool stuff to print. My favorite sites to download 3D printing files are Thanks, Thingiverse, Cults 3D, and Printables. If you have something really specific in mind, you can also just Google and put 3D print or 3D file at the end and Google will usually find something for you. The advantage of downloading models is that you can start printing right away, but the downside is that what you downloaded might not fit your needs perfectly. For example, cable organizers generally work for all kinds of cables, especially if you have a few different sizes. On the other hand, I was recently looking for a headphone holder for my IKEA SCADA system and found one. The problem, however, was that my AirPods Max, which have a relatively wide headband on the top, didn't really fit on it. So this is the part where you might have to design something yourself or adapt the design. The other route is designing things yourself in a 3D CAD program. Programs that I can recommend are Fusion 360, which is even free for personal use and it's really professional. What I also love about Fusion is that it's kind of the standard in terms of this, so you'll find a lot of good tutorials and also Shaper 3D. Unfortunately, Shaper 3D isn't free, but the iPad version is honestly amazing. When you're designing things for yourself, the upside is that you can make super unique and specific things that maybe only you ever needed. For example, I recently cut a small pipe and I didn't just want the end to be open, so I 3D printed an end cap. I just had to measure the outside and the inside once, then I modeled it in 3D in just two minutes, and printed the thing in five minutes and it was done and it looks great. And with some time and improvement, I actually even made this multi-part lampshade here, which worked out pretty well. It's definitely not perfect, but I can see how much I grow and how much I'm getting better at this whole thing. One thing I have to say though, 3D modeling is hard. When I first started on this journey, I had actually no idea how to construct something in 3D and it was all just making stuff happen in the sketchiest way possible. So I can really recommend doing a course. There's even a free one and I'm working on a video on how I learned how to 3D model in 30 days. So subscribe to the channel if you wanna watch that. So you really have to put the effort in to learn it, but I think it's also really rewarding. But if you're just starting out, just get some models to download and then slowly move your way into making your own models if you want that. Over time, I've printed all sorts of super practical things. For example, there's my Apple continuity camera mount, which lets me simply put my phone on top of my monitor and use the camera from my iPhone during video calls. I also designed and printed these super simple cable organizers in various different sizes. Generally, 3D printing is super nice to tidy things up around the house. There are things like the holder for my power strip, which is mounted under my table. 
but a 3D printer is not only useful for printing new fancy things, it's also really great to make replacement parts. Unfortunately, it does happen that if something breaks, that replacement part is super hard or even impossible to come by. So all of a sudden you have a completely broken product, although it's maybe just like one teeny tiny thing that's actually broken. And that's where 3D printing can actually save the day because for a lot of stuff you can just download the replacement part and print it or with some parts you'll have to 3D model a little bit but usually you can get a fix working. Even putting availability aside, 3D printing has two great factors over just getting a replacement part. The first one is obviously the price. If you already have the 3D printer then a little plastic part will maybe just cost you whatever 10 cents or not really anything. But if you order, they'll be like two bucks, which isn't too bad, but then put an additional five bucks of shipping on there and things start getting expensive for just this tiny thing. With 3D printing, you have it there and you have it instantly. And that's the second really important thing. If you print it, it will be there in a couple minutes or maybe an hour. If you order it, it might take days for you to actually have your parts in and then be able to fix whatever it is you have to fix. And I think that's a really nice thing. So I think this is really amazing just for replacement parts. Of course, you're unlikely to recuperate the cost of your 3D printer just with printing replacement parts that you otherwise would have bought, but it's actually really nice. You're saving some money there. It's, you know, you're using it as a tool and not just as a toy. For example, if you're building Lego and you're missing that one specific brick, for a lot of the stuff you can actually just print it out and you'll have it in a couple minutes and you can just get back to building. Another thing that recently happened to me is that I broke the securing pin of a LAN cable and it really wasn't useful after that anymore because it would just slip out the thing every five seconds. It was horrible. But then I was looking to fix it somehow. And since I didn't have a 3D printer then, I had to order, I think, a 50 pack of these cable secures that you can just attach on the cable itself. It worked, it was nice, but now I have 49 and I don't even have that many LAN cables that could ever break. With 3D printing, I would have just downloaded it and printed one and that would have been way, way better. So with very tiny, low cost items, you often have to buy them in bulk, whereas with 3D printing, you can just make one. The last really nice thing about 3D printing is the creative side. So you can either develop creative solutions for something you actually need yourself, or you can just make cool stuff that's just nice. As I said before, making your own stuff in 3D modeling is definitely the hardest. And I wouldn't probably start with this, but it's a really cool thing once you get into it. And it's kind of magical to just create thing, prototype it, and then build your own solution for whatever it is you want, or just play around with cool stuff. So for me, that's the kind of stuff like making this apparition so our toothbrushes are cleaner in the cabinet, people making stuff like fidget spinners for themselves, or even designing add-ons for games or designing completely new games, figurines, whatever. Your possibilities are pretty much endless. So I really hope this video showed you why a 3D printer is something that you should really invest in this year. You can use it for so many cool things, from fixing things to just having fun and playing around. It's so nice and honestly, I buy a lot of gadgets and a lot of them I don't use, but 3D printers is one of the main things in the last year where I was like, wow, this is really amazing. If you're not wondering what 3D printer specifically to buy, I've left a couple of my favorites in the description down below. There's not like one perfect one, but it really depends on what you're trying to do. So if now you did the right thing and already ordered yourself a 3D printer and you're wondering, hey, what should I actually print with this specifically? Here's this great video that I made on Gridfinity. It's a super amazing storage system with so many custom modules and so many ways to customize it. It's amazing, you should check the video out and hopefully print some for yourself. So I'll see you in the next video, bye.